Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this session I'm going to show you how SQL Server utilizes Windows I.O. system and how you should troubleshoot when you face I.O. related performance issues in SQL Server. I'm going to divide this session into two parts. In part one, I'm going to speak about Windows I.O. system components itself. You'll be able to learn how I.O. system has been built in Windows level and how data flows through different components until it reaches hardware. This knowledge works as a fundament for the next part where we will learn how to troubleshoot SQL Server I.O. issues. Let's get started. Firstly, I want to point out the design goal of I.O. system in Windows. It is provide an abstraction of lower level physical and logical devices to applications. For example, you are driving a car. As a driver, your main job is to know how to drive a car. You don't need to know how how car works internally so in detailed way, right? Applications also do not need to know how request is fulfilled by I.O. system. They just use available Windows API calls for I.O. request and Windows fulfills this request internally. Let's investigate I.O. system components to know how this abstraction is done for applications. Applications make one of the Windows API calls. If it wants to read, for example, it can use read file or read file scatter APIs. If it is write request, it can use write file or write file getter. Afterwards, this request is sent to NTDLL, which converts these API calls to one of the kernel functions. For example, in the case of read file, NT read file function is used. Then this function is submitted to IO manager. Then IO Manager validates the request and creates IO request packet, which we call IRP. Then this IRP is submitted to one of the required device drivers. We often see file system, volume manager, disk drivers in the process. IRP can be processed by only one driver or several drivers. For example, after processing, file system driver may pass IRP to volume manager volume manager process and submits to another driver, etc. Okay. Finally, IRP is submitted to hardware level for physical I.O. operation. This is high level overview of the I.O. system. Let's dive deeper. We stated that applications should use following Windows API functions. Okay, what parameters are there in this function? Let's see read file function. Read file function reads data from the specified file or input output device. Reads occur at the position specified by the file pointer. First parameter is H file. This is a handle to the device, for example, for a file, file stream, physical disk, volume, console, buffer, you know. So this is the IO device location from where we should bring data. LP buffer appointed to the buffer that receives the data which is read from a file or device. In other words, this is the place in buffer to which we are bringing data. Then comes number of bytes to read. This is the maximum number of bytes to be read. And then overlapped flags that is used to make requests asynchronous. Okay, so this is the parameters where applications can use while making read a request. Now we understand how applications use API functions. Let's now talk about the second step, which is NTDLL functions. NTDLL functions are Windows native functions which transfers application-made function to the function which is understood by kernel. For example, read file function is submitted to NTDLL and NTDLL at the same time will use its own corresponding function like NTRead file. What parameters are there in this NTRead file? First one is a file handle. This is a handle to the file object. Okay, this is just coming from H file in the read file. Next important parameter is buffer to where we are bringing data. You can refer to Microsoft documentation on, on other descriptions. An important point here is that NTDLL functions parameters are being generated based on the application call function. Then this DLL function is passed to IO Manager. IO Manager is a core of the IO system. It delivers user mode IO requests to device drivers. IO Manager creates IO request packet, which we call IRP from NTDLL function. 
IRP is a packet of information to process IO requests. Okay, so IRPs are submitted to drivers and hardware. If we look inside the IRP, we can see following important members. First, IO status. This indicates the number of bytes to read and write. For example, this is coming from read file parameter of n number of bytes to read. Okay. Then user buffer, the buffer pointer provided by the application. For example, this is coming also from read file parameter of LP buffer. And there are other types of parameters which we specify this IO request. Okay. One point. There are also IO stack locations which are used by drivers. I will speak about this later. Next, this IRP is submitted to a driver. There might be only one driver or there might be several drivers which process this IO request depending on type of request. Okay? IRP is submitted by IO manager to first driver. First driver fills IRP IO call stack which with important parameters and passes it to another driver. This driver also fills in IRP call stack and sends to next driver. In this way, IR, IRP is filled with important parameters by each driver and submitted to hardware by last driver. Last driver is often uh, comes like this driver for these devices. Okay. If the device is busy, IRP is put to driver queue and submitted when hardware becomes available. Afterwards, hardware device does physical operations like moving data from memory or to memory based on the information provided by IRP. After the physical operation finishes, hardware gives back IRP to driver. Then this driver cleans call stack and passes back to previous driver. This driver also cleans call stack and submits back to previous driver. In this way, IRP is cleaned by drivers and submitted back to IO manager. IO manager also omits this IRP and sends back IO completion confirmation to application. Now we understand overall picture of how IO request flows through the components. Finally, I want to mention about filter drivers like antivirus. Filter drivers are located above the device drivers to filter IO request. You should remember these filter drivers because we often face loneliness due to this filtering. Now, based on what we learned until now, let's see how SQL Server utilizes IO subsystem. SQL Server is at the top as an application. When SQL Server runs query which requires IO operation, this query is passed to IO manager an IO manager generates IRP, then IRP is passed to next drivers. Afterwards, this driver passes IRP to either multi-pass system driver, if you have storage areas, or to port driver, if you have single disk. As you can see, there are many layers. If you face any slowness in your, in your SQL Server queries due to IO issue, the issue might be happening at any of these layers. For example, the issue at the driver level, drivers might be outdated, or they might be filter drivers somewhere between drivers. To summarize, the investigation scope is big. There are many layers out there. In the next step, I'm going to share how to narrow down this scope and troubleshoot IO performance issue which happen at these layers.